Well, howdy, YouTube. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. It is a beautiful, beautiful, sunny Saturday morning. Well, mid morning. It's about 10 30 here, my time. So, what I thought I would do, I get a lot of call for this. Uh, every time I do a video on my Dell or every time I talk about ESXi, I always get kind of flooded with questions about, well, how do I install it? How do I set it up? How do I, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I did a video, oh, I don't know, a year ago, six months ago, on how to install ESXi on a Dell. Uh, they make a uh, specific image for the Dell, for ESXi, Dell does, as does IBM, as does Lenovo, etc. So I went and downloaded that image uh, directly from Dell, and uh, it's up to version U3 now. And uh, so what I want you to see is me installing that on one of my Dell servers. So let's get to that video right now. So before we get started, I just want you to see what it is we're going to be working with. And the easiest way to do that is to show you it running Windows Server 2019. Now this is the uh, first Dell in my rack, the Dell R720. Or I mean the Dell R710, don't know what I'm talking about. This is the one that we uh, downgraded and, or upgraded, which depends on which way you look at it, the processor. We switched over to an L5640 uh, <clears throat> dual socket, 6 core, 12 thread, 24 logical uh, processor CPU uh, because it uses lower, less power, etc. And at the same time, we also upgraded the RAM on this to uh, 96 gigabytes, almost maxed it out. Uh, then it's got the Gigabit 10 network card in here, and then it actually has four of these one Gigabit NIC, uh, NIC cards. So I just wanted you to see the specs on the machine before we started installing VMware on it. So in keeping with our VMware theme, I'm, I'm going to actually do this. Uh, we're going to pretend using the iDRAC controller that we're sitting somewhere miles away from our server that's on a rack somewhere on the interwebs. And we're going to connect to it over the internet or over Internet Explorer. Now, I've created this Windows 7 virtual machine because with iDRAC 6, it's just easier to get Internet Explorer to work with it than it is with Windows 10. So the first thing we'll need to do is launch a browser. But before we do that, in order to install a piece of software remotely, in other words, we're pretending I don't have physical access to the server right now, I need to make sure that on the local C drive that I have an image file that we're going to need. So what I have on here is the customized VMware installer that I got from Dell for my model of Dell. And yes, uh, my model will work with that processor that's on it. So we have version 6.7.0 update 3. That's the latest and greatest version. We need to make sure we've copied that to our local virtual machines hard drive, which we have done. Now what we'll do is we'll open Internet Explorer, right click and open that as an administrator. It'll just make your life a whole lot easier. And then I already have a link to it set up here. So I'm going to continue to the website, log in as root, and our super secret password. Now the reason I'm doing this, that I'm putting VMware back on this Dell. This Dell has six three and a half inch drive bays. And I have decided I want to use, uh, I have a plethora of three and a half inch hard drives. And I don't, what I don't have many of is two and a half inch hard drives. So I want to use this Dell as a storage server slash everything kind of server. So that's why I'm going to put VMware on it. Because what VMware does, not that Hyper-V won't, but it's just easier with VMware to do a pass-through of a device, of a physical device like the uh, uh, drive controller uh, to a virtual machine in VMware. And that way, if I decide to run Exponology or FreeNAS or whatever, I can pass all the drives through and they'll have direct control of the uh, hardware. So the first thing I need to do is come over here and launch a session. And we're going to do this in Java. I'm going to go ahead and continue, and it'll probably give me a couple more warnings about Java, but eventually it will come up. Now, if you're having trouble getting your web browser to work with iDRAC 6, go over to, uh, go over to, uh, what's the guy's name of the guy's video channel? Uh, not Serve the Home, Art of Server. 
look up Art of Server on uh, YouTube. Uh, this is the guy I get my processors from. I get my flashed LSI controllers from him. Uh, and he's got a method to get uh, Java to work on Windows 10 with IDRAC 6. So what we're going to select now is Virtual Media. So I'm going to launch that. And the first thing I'm going to do is add an image. And I'm going to point that to my local C drive. And then we're going to install that Dell 6.7 Update 3, the Dell customized image. So we're going to up, we're going to uh, mount that, add it, and then we're going to map it. It's very important you map it. And then I like to cl click on details so I can actually see the unit booting off of that. And the next thing we want to do is power on our system. And you'll need to get ready to press the F11 key to select the boot menu. Now while this is booting, let's talk. So in this unit, I have a 256 gig SSD drive in a CD-ROM drive adapter tray that plugs into the serial ATA controller on the motherboard on this Dell R710, which in essence separates it from the uh, H310 controller that is in here that it's been flashed to IT mode so that I can use the internal SSD to boot off of and use it for some local storage for VMware. But yet I don't, uh, I don't, I, I'm able to pass through the hard drives on the SATA SAS uh, LSI controller directly to an operating th system through VMware, as you will see. And yes, servers are notoriously slow to boot. Now I've just. I've made my peace with the fact that I'm going to have to use VMware for what it is I want to do. So I re-upped my VMUG uh, subscription for another year. For 200 bucks, you get six, li six CPU licenses, uh, plus you get vSphere, you get two licenses for that, plus you get VMware Workstation. So if you're, I just hit F11 to enter the BIOS. Uh, so if you're, you know, if you're doing lab environments like I am, 200 bucks is, you know, it's not a lot of money to spend on your education. And uh, you really need to use VMware in a lab if you're going to understand how it works. Book learning is fine, but you also need physical hands-on lab environments. So. At least. Uh, but the PowerEdge 710s, they're getting ready to stop support on these CPUs on these units. So... VMware is. Not Windows though. Windows will pretty much run on anything, but uh, I prefer the VMware hypervisor for the pass-through ability. I know Windows will do it too, but it's much more complicated and uh, less uh, appealing or satisfying than it is with VMware. So this is the uh, H310 that was flashed into IT mode by Art of Server. If you've ever seen him or seen his YouTube channel, go check it out. He's a great guy. Learned a lot from him about these Dells. Now, one problem with booting off of virtual media is it's much slower than if you were to physically put a USB key in the machine. But I want you to see how slow it is on booting. Now, of course, it's not going to do much if I speed through the video, but so it should come up to the boot menu here in just a minute. And it has so I'm gonna I'm gonna choose har, uh, virtual uh, CD right here. Hit enter, and if you'll notice now it says it's reading from that. So I'm gonna launch the Dell ESXi installer, and hopefully my CPU will pass. If it tells you you know future updates may not be supported, that's fine. That's what you want to see. Now I know I've had VMware 6.7 on this machine when I had the other processor in it I just replaced uh, but this is a 5600 series processor so it should still work but the proof will be in the pudding here as they say all right so that took a few fair few minutes I paused the video while it was doing it and uh, it's warning me it's compatible on most systems but make sure you check the compatibility guide so let's press enter let's uh, press F11 to accept and then it should go out and scan all my drives.
All right, so there is my Samsung 850 SSD drive, 230 gig, and then you can see all the other two terabyte drives that are connected to the to, to the SAS controller. So we're going to select the Samsung and we're going to let it override it, and we'll use that also for our data store. We're going to be using shared storage with all of these VMware machines, but for now we'll let it use that data store. Okay, it's warning us it's going to, uh, it contains existing data, it's going to be lost. Press enter for OK, US keyboard. Go ahead and enter a super secret password, and the password requirements for VMware have changed, so you have to use a complex password now. Whereas before you could get away with a not so <laughs> hot password and it's warning us that the uh, CPU will not may not be supported in future releases that's fine ESXi is going to be the last or 6.7 is going to be the last version we're able to install on these R710s I believe I'm going to hit F11 to install we'll let it install and we'll come back when something changes all right so it wants us to uh, remove the boot image before uh, remove the installation media before rebooting so we're gonna exit here and hit enter to reboot and this is gonna take a little bit of time so we'll come back when we're booted back up alright so we've successfully booted into VMware and you see it identifies our processors and our RAM properly we're going to go fix this little area right here, the uh, IP address information. I want to use hard-coded, so I'm going to press F2. Then I'll need to enter my super secret password. Now mind you, I'm doing all this through the iDRAC controller. I still haven't connected to the web interface yet, not until we get our everything set. So the first thing I'm going to do is configure the management network and the i'm going to go in on the network adapter i want to make sure that my 10 gig nic is the one that is chosen yes and it sees it as a pci so that's good uh, the reason i'm not using the gigabit nic is i've got it reserved i want to use some other things for it <clears throat> and i just as a general rule i'm going to connect the 10 gig is my management and my vm network for now so uh we'll come down here to ipv4 oop i went too far I forget the keyboard's a little laggy. So IPv4, then we're going to come down to set static IP address. Sorry. And then we'll come down and enter our new IP, 192.168.5.6. And the rest is correct. Hit enter. The DNS configuration. Oh, did I put a host name in there? Let's see. Uh, no, no place for a host name, so we'll do that under DNS. It's already got our DNS suffix in there correctly, so I'm going to have it use these, but I'm going to call this ESXi-DEL1. Hit enter. Good. So now, uh, yes, I forgot to change IPv6, though. I need to go take care of that. I'm going to turn IPv6 off as I'm not using it. I'm going to disable and it is going to tell us that it is going to require a restart. I'm just not ready for IP or for for IPv6. So all right, so we'll let it restart. It's going to take a few minutes and we'll come back and uh, see if we can log into it. All right, so I made a little boo boo, so you're going to come along with me to fix it. We're going to go back to configure the management network I put the wrong IP in here it should be 5.5 .5, .5, .5, 5.5 .5 .6 so let's go down there and correct that uh, to love it when you screw something up alright so now it'll have to restart the management network yes so let's try it Oh, thank you. Thank you, Chrome Autocomplete. I just love it when you try to read my freaking mind. 
I suppose I could turn that off. All right, so now we're coming up to the VMware login screen, finally. Go ahead and click on login. I am not going to join it. So, uh, it's warning me this host is potentially vulnerable to issues. And I would be, I would bet you that is the Spectre mitigation. And it also warns me about uh, the license. And it says we're running a customized version. This is not a static file and doesn't get updated, uh, uh, doesn't get updated upon updates, which is not a problem. So there we go. Dell PowerEdge R710, 12 CPUs, 24 logical. Two sockets, six cores for socket, hyper-threadings enabled, 95 gig of RAM. Uh, there's my default gateway, etc., etc. So uh, I'm going to get started configuring this bad boy. I just want you to see it being installed. Now, I do have vSphere installed. This is the 5.7 is the IBM, and we're getting a security error. I'll figure that out later. For now, I'm going to clean it, or clear it. That's on the updates. Uh, so you see that's an IBM X3650 Model 3, 16 processors, and uh, 48 gig of RAM on this one. So um, <clears throat> this is the one we eventually will be replacing with the Dell R720. But for now, it hosts our VMware vCenter server and all of our prepped images. So it's like our little storage repository. Uh, this is the main reason you need vSphere Client. You're going to see once we once I start cloning an image, I'm going to actually clone this exponology image once I add this server to the vSphere uh, directory. Right now, this is another server I have out there. It's just a temporary one. It's, it's on that i7 processor. It's a little unit I built uh, just to test some free NAS stuff on. So there you go. Uh, it's not, again, soup to nuts, but it shows you the steps I need to take to get that image to work on my Dell. Now I've used that image on both my Dells. I've used also used that image on... What's that? Uh, I don't know, you'll have to wait and see, won't you? But it is Merry Christmas time. Maybe Santa came early, huh? Anyway, I digress. So uh, I've used that image on all the Dells that I have. Uh, and then I downloaded just a, a regular image for uh, my IBM server and it worked fine. I haven't had any issues. So uh, hopefully that'll get some of you started on getting ES6i installed. And uh, keep in mind, you need a 5600 series processor or better. If you have a 5500 series processor, you're either going to get a warning that your CPU is not compatible and it won't install, or you're going to get a purple screen of death, one of the two. So, uh, but you can buy uh, CPUs for these things. In fact, I will put a link down below uh, to the Art of Servers eBay page where I got the processors uh, that we uh, changed out in my Dell. So you know me, I could ramble on all day. So we're going to end the video there. And we hope you found it entertaining and informative as always. Please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked the video. Leave your comments in the comments section. We also take PayPal and Patreon. Oh! And another little gem of an announcement. Don't forget, we're over on BitChute as well. So if YouTube is not your cup of tea, don't forget we have a BitChute site as well. In fact, in 2020, keep, keep your eyes open for this, we're going to do some exclusive stuff over on BitChute. Uh, because I, wanna, I want people to see the potential for BitChute over there. And... Uh, I, I just have my reasons for doing that. No, we're not dumping YouTube. We're not moving off it. But I want to play around with BitChute where I can be a little more... Uh, I have a little more freedom over there, it appears. So look for some exclusive videos coming up on BitChute as well. So there you go. Thanks again for coming to see us. And please don't forget that we will see you on the other side.